Hello everyone. Happy Tuesday. It's time for another episode of Tuesday Live at 5. This is Lena Gursa. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. And today I am super excited to share with you this awesome bundle from the brand new Handmade for You Stampin' Up! August December mini catalog. Now this catalog just went live today. So if you have had your copy for a couple of weeks and you've been dying for the chance to order, today is the day. Ordering is now live. Now, this catalog, I'm going to I'm actually going to feature a whole bunch of product from this catalog in my live launch party on Friday evening. So, I'm not going to talk a whole lot about the catalog today, um but you you'll want to tune in on Friday evening at 7:30 p.m. Eastern time for my live launch party. We are going to have some fun uh -uh with this catalog. Now, the bundle that I'm featuring today is found on page 49. Okay, it's this one right here. It's called called Love of Leaves. Now, to be honest, when I first saw these stamps, I was like, okay, they're pretty, but they're not anything special. But let me tell you, this stamp set coupled with this stitched leaves set of dies is just fantastic. Now the bundle pricing on this, you do get 10% off when you buy the bundle. So both the stamps and dies together at $64.75 here in Canada. Now let me show you up close and personal what you get in that bundle. So first of all, we have the stamp set and uh, the stamp set includes lovely watercolor effect images as well as some beautiful sentiments, like really beautiful sentiments. Um, I love this hope changes everything one. Like right now, do we not all need a little hope in this world? My goodness. Um, so I love the sentiments in this set and I love the font in this set. Um, so that's the stamp set and then we get these gorgeous stitched leaves dies. So each um, die has a die that cuts out the shape of the leaf and then leaves a stitched outline on the negative. Okay, and I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute. And then you have the option as you're die cutting of including the stitched veins. Um, you can actually cut both at once. So this is best used with a magnetic platform and um, you can cut both the shape and the veining at the same time. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six different leaves. And then we have this really cool texturizing die, which I'm going to use on one of the projects um, in a few minutes that you'll see. Okay, so that is the set of dies. So this bundle again is available for 10% off uh, when you purchase both together. All right, now, just before I get going here, I want to pull up my live video on my iPad so I can see who's wa who's watching with me. Where are we? My iPad's a little slow and I keep getting these tornado alerts. <laughs> we are nowhere near where the tornado is, but they keep coming up. All right, so let's see who's here. We've got Deb and Louise and Sue and Gail and Sue McLeod. How are you guys doing? Thanks for joining me. It was really, really nice to be away. I missed you guys last week. I hope you missed me too. Um, but it was really nice to just kind of unplug for a week. And uh, I read six novels in five days. So <laughs> it was a really relaxing week. So I'm, I needed it really badly. But I'm back and I'm super excited about this catalog. So we're going to get right to it. Uh, Deb. Oh, the, these magnetic sheets? These are actually um, vent covers, the magnetic vent covers. And you can get them at um, like Home Depot or Lowe's or Rona. Um, you can also get them on Amazon. Okay. And then I've just stuck them to some chipboard that was from, you know, that comes with um, the specialty papers. So I just stuck them on there and that gives me a nice stiff uh, magnetic board to adhere my dies to. Okay. All right. Let's get to it. We're going to start with this one. So we're going to kind of work up in, in um, difficulty. This one is really all about the gorgeous DSP and the dies. So the DSP that I used is actually, it's called Gilded Autumn. It's specialty DSP and it is part of the Gilded Autumn Suite. So this one here. Um, so you can find that on page 45 in your catalog. It's this beautiful DSP here. And honestly, the colors and the images in this are just gorgeous. Now again, you're going to see this DSP up at close and personal um, on Friday when I do my launch video or my launch party. Okay. But I use two of the patterns from the DSP pack. So this is one of the ones that has the gold foiling. And on the back, it has this beautiful um, sort of foliage image that I'm actually going to use on the next card. Okay, so we're going to start with this piece. This piece is four by five and a quarter inches. And then I also have two die cut 
stitch triangles. Now the stitch triangle dies are in the annual catalog and I've actually cut these so that they kind of go, do you see how when I put it together they kind of go, they, the, they go in the same direction, okay? That's so that I can glue these in opposite corners on my DSP and get something that looks a little bit um, continuous, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and just apply a little bit of liquid glue to the back of my triangles and we are going to just adhere that down. Um, yes, so you can get some at Dollarama. I do have some from Dollarama, um, but I have found that they are not as strong as the magnetic vent covers. Um, I used the Dollarama ones for a long time, and then it came, there came a point where I couldn't find any, <laughs> and I needed more. So I went ahead and ordered um, or purchased these vent covers, and I have to say I like them better. They're a little bit stronger. They hold the dies a little bit better um, than the Dollarama ones. So that's just my experience. Okay, so there is my background. I've added my two stitch triangles onto my DSP and I can actually go ahead and glue this onto my card base. So my card base is crumb cake cardstock. It's four and a quarter by 11 inches and it's scored in the middle at five and a half. So we'll fold that in half along our score line. And I'm gonna use a little bit of seal to apply some adhesive. And we're just gonna pop this on to our card like that, hopefully straight. There we go, okay. Now I have, I'm gonna show you what these dies do. Okay, so I had cut, um, first of all, a, I actually cut both of these at the same time, a scalloped circle from the layering circle dies and that largest leaf. And they actually fit quite nicely. This one just kind of nestles into the scalloped circle die. So can you see how when I cut out the leaf, I get that stitched negative, okay? And then when I actually cut the leaf, I don't get the stitching on the outline of the leaf, but I get the, the stitching vein, stitch veins. Okay, so that's just a little, um, it's just a little different. These dies are a little bit different from um, some of the other stitch dies that we have. So I'm gonna start by gluing my um, circle down first and I'm gonna glue that flat. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of liquid glue to start. And I'm gonna glue this on a little bit of an angle. I'm kind of looking at the way my, um, my greenery is kind of growing this way. So I kind of want to follow that direction as I'm gluing this on. Hi, Krista, how are you doing? Hope you had a good vacation. Okay, and then we're going to take, we're gonna pop our leaf up inside that um, cut out hole. So to do that, the easiest way to do it is actually to put your dimensionals in the spaces where the leaves are on the cutout. So then we'll get rid of our backings. I'm actually gonna put one in the middle too so it doesn't get squished. Put one more in there. And then it's just a matter of kind of doing a puzzle and getting that lined up inside the outline. Okay, now that may not be perfectly lined up because I'm looking at it from the side, but that gives you the idea. Okay, isn't that pretty? Oh, I love that, that die cut. All right, so the only stamping on this card is our sentiment. So this is a really quick and easy one, which is why we started with it. Um, so I have here another piece of the uh, Gilded Autumn DSP. This is one that has um, pumpkins on the back, but I love this piece that has this sort of spattered um, look. And we're actually gonna use a larger piece of this on the third card that we're gonna make today. So I have my Hope Changes Everything sentiment and some early espresso ink. And I'm gonna ink that up with my early espresso. And then I'm gonna go ahead and stamp that just in the center of this little strip. Now I should mention this little strip is a half inch wide by four inches long, okay? And I'm going to bring in dun, 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 this new uh, pick a banner punch. Okay, this is new in, again, the mini catalog. And you know what's awesome about this catalog is we have an index at the back. So the pick a ba banner's pick a punch is on page 65. So let me just show you real quick where you can find it. It's right here. It's $31. And I tell you, it's the best $31 you're ever going to spend because you can punch banners any size. Okay, so no trimming required. Um, so I'm going to cut this. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to cut this one. 
So I'm gonna slide my um, DSP right into the punch as far as it goes. Okay, and I'm gonna keep the punch laying flat on my surface. This is important, okay? So it's gonna go in as far as it can and punch. Okay, and then I'm gonna flip it around and do the same thing on the other end. And look at that, easy peasy banner, love it. All right, so now this is going to get laid just across sort of the bottom part of my leaf here. So this part is popped, this part is not. So I'm gonna put a couple of dimensionals on either end and then just a little bit of tape here um, so that it lies flat across the leaf. So we're just gonna add a dimensional on one end and the cool thing about this particular banner shape is that it mimics the shape of a dimensional. So you can put it right nestled into the end of your banner. Oh, and I just stuck it to my fingers, okay? So then we'll get rid of our backings. And we're gonna pop this on. And again, we're gonna attempt to get it straight. It is a little bit harder to do than it looks when you're not looking straight at it. Okay, and then the last little touch is a little bow made from the 1 8 braided linen trim. I love this stuff. It is awesome for a sort of rustic feel. Um, and I really like to kind of play with it and stretch it out a little bit to tease it and kind of distress it. Um, I especially like to do that with the ends of my bow. So I'm just going to kind of pull it apart. And then I'm going to take a glue dot and press the knot of my bow against the glue dot. And then we're just gonna tuck that right on the end, just like that. And try not to cover up our sentiments. <laughs> there we go. Isn't that pretty? Oh, I love this paper. Now on the inside of this one, I left it blank because I figured I could put just about any sentiment on the inside of this or even just write an encouraging message. Um, there's a lot of people hurting right now and uh, lots of uncertainty. So having um, a stash of cards that are kind of encouragement cards, I think it's a really great idea. So that is, I just stamped that same leaf that coordinates with the die on the inside in some chrome cake ink. Okay, so that is number one. Hope you guys like that one. Let's move on to number two. So number two is the one I posted earlier today. Um, and again, we're all about the DSP, but then I'm also going to bring in some of the gorgeous Forever Greenery foil, laser cut foil. Um, those particular uh, images coordinate really, really nicely with this DSP. So I thought I would show you. All right, so to start, I have my background panel. This, again, is that same paper that we used on the first, on the last card, but we're using the reverse side. Love these images and colors. Um, so again, this is cut to four by five and a quarter. Okay, and then I have a piece of Cajun Craze cardstock. So this is um, one and three quarters by four inches. So it's designed to be the same width as my background panel. And I have run it through the machine with this, let me just grab it here, this texturizing die. And what it does is it creates these little stitched lines. And it just adds some really cool texture without the, the need for an embossing folder um, to your cardstock. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and glue that onto our um, DSP panel. So I'm going to add just a bit of adhesive. And this is going to go about an inch up from the bottom, an inch-ish. Let's say an inch. That works. So we're just going to use our grid paper to get that nice and straight. Okay, and then we're going to layer it on a slightly larger piece of Cajun Craze. So this is 4 and one eighth by 5 and 3 eighths. Okay, and it's just gonna pop on just like that. And I love the way adding that extra layer kind of ties this in, this, this panel in with it. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and add just a little bit of glue. And we're gonna pop this on here. And hopefully have a nice even border. There we go, okay. And then that is ready to adhere to our card base. We're gonna work on all of our, our little bits and bobs in a minute. But our card base is early espresso cardstock. It is five and a half by eight and a half inches and it's scored in the middle at four and a quarter. So we'll fold in half along the score line. 
it does look like a city background. You know what else I was thinking, Louise? Is it actually looks like, you know, um, when you have like a, a recording or a, like a, a sound meter? That's what it reminds me of. Um, that's the musician in me. It reminds me of a sound meter. Um, all right. So we're going to go ahead and glue our background panel onto our card base. It would be cool to use that with um, the old music of my or music from my heart stamp set. It makes some really cool um, recording cards. Okay, so there is my foundation. Okay, now we're going to work on sort of our focal image here. So to start, we're going to go ahead and stamp our sentiment. This is just a stitched rectangle cut using the stitched rectangle dies from uh, Car Crumb Cake cardstock. And we are going to stamp in early espresso ink. And we're going to use this sentiment. Just It's just as I thought of you today, which again is another really great sentiment just to send someone a little, no, I'm thinking of you, hope you're doing okay kind of card. Okay, so there is our sentiment. And then I'm going to bring in this leaf stamp. Now this is really stained already because I have used this set a lot already. I really love it. And I'm going to ink it up with some Cajun Craze ink. And I'm just going to bring, stamp on that one corner of my label like that. Okay. Now I'm going to show you, I'm going to stamp again on some very vanilla cardstock. I'm going to stamp once with that leaf in the Cajun Craze. And then I'm going to stamp again in mint macaron with the smaller leaf. So we're gonna ink that up and just stamp like that, okay? And it gives just a really pretty watercolor effect. So you see how this is lighter? It is supposed to be, okay? It's not designed to give a really super crisp image. Um, it's supposed to be light and, uh, and have that, that variation in color. Okay, so then um, I would run it over to my die cutting machine and cut it out and voila, with the magic of television, there we have it. <laughs> okay, now you can see that I've not only die cut, but I've also used the veining dies to add the detail to the leaves. Can you see that? I hope it shows. Okay, so let's move this out of the way. And we are going to add a little color to our foil pieces. So these are um, from the Forever Greenery laser cut foil. And we're going to leave this guy as it is. We're going to leave that one gold. But these guys, um, I thought it would be kind of cool to pull in the color from the background. So these really mimic some of the background imagery. So we're just going to flip them over and use the white side and apply some color. So we're gonna start with this one that kind of looks like a little sheaf of green. So I'm gonna bring in my early espresso and my dauber and I'm just going to daub. Now with these, they're quite delicate. So you do want to daub rather than rub, okay? It's too easy to tear these guys uh, because they are so delicate. Now I'm not gonna worry about going right down to the bottom. That gives me a nice clean area to hold on to. but there is my little grain sheaf. And isn't that a cool sort of effect um, to do? Wouldn't that, oh, that'd be fun to do on the inside, wouldn't it? I stamped some leaves on the inside of this one, but that would be really cool too. Designing on the fly here, you guys. <laughs> okay, so there is my grain. And then I'm going to come in with the mint macaron. And we're going to add a little bit of color to this one. So again, I'm just going to daub I'm not going to rub because I don't want to tear these delicate pieces. So I'm just kind of daubing the ink on. And now you're going to have to set these aside for just a couple minutes to allow the ink to dry. Okay. Um, because they do have a little bit of a sheen to them and they're going to need just a minute or so to set up. Okay. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and assemble. So to start, I'm actually going to put a little bit of tape down on my card to adhere these delicate bits. So I'm just going to put a little bit mm, right about there because it's going to get covered with my label. And I'm going to add my mint macaron leaves. Put those there. And I'm going to add my grain. This is still quite wet. It's quite shiny. <laughs> I'm going to try to do this without getting ink all over myself. All right, and then we're going to add this gold one just as is. So we'll just kind of layer that on top. 
okay? And then we're gonna go ahead and add our leaves. Now, before we do that, we're going to add a little bit of um, gold cord trim. So this is, again, from the Forever Greenery um, but suite. It is the Forever Greenery trim. Um, there's two different trims that come in the pack. It's a combo pack. So I'm adding a glue dot to the back of my label, and I'm just gonna wrap this around twice, okay? And then again, press the end of my cord into that glue dot so it stays secure okay just like that then we can go ahead and add our leaves so we're going to add just a glue dot to the back of our large leaf here we're going to add that right about there and then i'm going to add another glue dot to the back of my smaller leaf we'll put that guy there and then this is going to get popped up on the front of our cards so we're going to add a couple of dimensionals Oh, Louise, you will love these leaves, honestly. Well, I'm a sucker for fall and leaves. Like, honestly, <laughs> I love them. I got married in the fall. Our, our wedding anniversary is in October. So I love fall imagery um, and fall colors. So this set was kind of a no-brainer for me. Um, but honestly, it's really, really pretty. These stitch leaves are just, just gorgeous. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and add our label. And again, we're going to try and get it relatively straight and somewhat centered. That is not straight. There we go. That's a little better. And then to finish, we're going to add um, a little bow. So here we go. This is a twine bow. This is the really, really fine gold twine. This is the stuff that frays really, really significantly. So I'm going to start by making a loop in my right hand, leaving a tail, and then I'm gonna bring that tail around my loop and bring it through. So I'm not actually tying a knot, okay? That is so that I don't end up with a bulky knot um, when I have really fine twine, okay? A bulky knot would look a little odd. So I want my um, loops on this one to be fairly small so that it'll fit. So again, it's gonna go right there and I don't wanna cover up my um, sentiment too much. So I don't want my loops to be too, too big. Now to adhere, when you have a really fine bow like this, um, the easiest way to, to adhere it is to take a glue dot and just kind of roll it into a little booger like that. And then you're gonna press that down where you want your bow to go and then press the bow into the, into the little glue booger, okay? And then I'm gonna just trim that off my roll and then I'm gonna do some fraying. So I like to fray my ends and then trim them to length, just so I can kind of get a feel for what it's gonna look like once I trim them down. Um, so I'm just gonna fray this, and it does not take much to get these to fray. You just kind of twist it in the opposite direction. And then I'm gonna take and trim this a little bit. All right, okay. I have to make a confession. I have the Leafs playoff game right now playing on silently on my TV here in the studio. So if I'm a little distracted, it's because the Leafs are playing. I don't know whose idea it was to do a four o'clock start on a Tuesday, but it's very inconvenient for my live at five. All right. So now the last little touch is to add a little bit of sparkle. These little sequins here. These are actually from the Artistry Blooms um, sequin pack. So this is from the annual catalog and it comes with four different different colors of sequins and these are kind of cool because they don't actually have holes in the center whoops I got one more than I bargained for we're gonna pop that one back on there and so I'm going to pull just one large one we're gonna pop it down here and these colors this orange um, works really really well with this paper I really love being able to incorporate um, embellishments from the annual catalog with products from the from the holiday so there we go, there is our finished card. And again, I'll just quick show you what I did on the inside of my sample. Um, I did, oh, got a little smudgy there. We'll just have to add a some kind of bling. Um, so I added another sentiment, which I love, um, from the same stamp set and then stamped some, some more of the leaves that I did on the front, okay? But how cool would it be to do like a stencil on the inside? So, so cool. All right, so that is number two, done and done. Hope you guys like that one. And I'm going to move some stiff out of the way. Still no score in the lease game for anybody who cares. <laughs> um, I care. So here is number three. Now this I think is my favorite. Um, I love this color palette for fall. Don't get me wrong. I love the other ones too. But I really love this rich um, sort of saturated color palette. So let me show you how I did that. So to start... 
Um, we are going to pull out a, this again is that same um, DSP that we used on the first card to cut our little strip. So this is a larger piece and I love this spatter um, effect. I'm, I'm a real sucker for that. So this is great to stamp on. Um, it's a really awesome neutral pattern that you can use for so much and it's easy because you don't have to add the spatter. It's already there. Now on the back, we have these awesome pumpkins, which I love, um, but I think I love this more, which is, <laughs> says a lot about my style. So we are going to start, I just need to grab, what do I do with that other stamp? I forgot to clean a stamp. I need these guys from the last card. Got to clean them. Um, what was I talking about? Totally lost my train of thought. Can't be important, right? It'll come to me. Okay. So these are the three leaf stamps that we're going to use. And our color palette is actually uh, Mary Merlot and Blackberry Bliss. So two colors that are actually quite close. Um, this is a little bit more brown. This is a little bit more red. Um, but they are really quite close to each other and they work really well together. So we're going to start with the Mary Merlot and our large leaf. So I'm going to ink that up. I should probably mention, did I mention this is five and a quarter by four inches. Um, I'm going to start with my large leaf and I'm going to stamp on an angle kind of going up this way. I should have my stamp and pierce mat here, but I don't. Okay. And then we're going to do another one kind of going the opposite way. And I'm not going to worry that these, these are going to kind of cross over because we're not going to see it. We're going to hide it. Okay. So that's the large leaf. Then I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to come in with the blackberry and I'm going to use this smaller leaf and I'm going to add one going this way and one going this way. And it's really cool that these guys can overlap without, um, you know, sometimes when you overlap images, it's not so pretty, but because this is so much more saturated, um, they overlap really, really nicely. Okay, so then I'm going to get rid of my Blackberry and I'm going to come back with the Merlot and I'm going to add a couple of these small leaves. So we're going to add one here and again, we're not going to worry about overlapping because that's going to get hidden. We're going to add this little guy kind of down here. Okay, so far so good. All right, now we're going to have some spongy fun. So I have my daubers here and I have a strip of, um, again, more of that DSP. This is the same um, pattern that I used on the first card and I've actually cut it longer than it needs to be. I need it to be five and a quarter inches, but this is, I don't know, it's longer. <laughs> It's like six and something. And that's just so that I have a spot to hold it while I'm sponging without getting really inky fingers. So I'm going to start with my darker shade. I'm going to put this aside so I don't have a little oopsie. And I'm going to pull in my dauber and I'm going to sponge the blackberry along the bottom sort of half of this DSP. So this DSP has gold and copper metallic accents. And the cool thing is that the metallic resists the ink as I'm adding it. Okay. So I'm not going to go all the way to the edge here. I don't need the full length. Um, and that is going to give me just a, a pristine spot to hold so I don't get inky fingers. So we'll close that one up and we're going to come back with the Merlot. And I'm going to sponge the rest of the, the panel with the Merlot and I'm going to blend them. And you, you see how you get this gorgeous, almost ombre effect with these two colors. They just work so, so beautifully together. So, and I can actually go over the entire piece with the Merlot and get a really, really nice blend. And obviously the more ink you add, the more intense your color is going to be. And you're gonna get that really pretty effect. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, love it. I'm gonna have to do a whole card front with that. I just really like it. Okay, so now we're just gonna take a sec and trim this down to the size that we want. Remember I said we only want five and a quarter. So I'm gonna bring in my trimmer and just cut off the extra. So we're going at five and a quarter. I'll just get rid of that little bit 
And now we have this gorgeous strip to add to our background. So bringing this back, we're gonna go ahead and glue that on here. Now don't worry that we see that, um, that little leaf, it's gonna get hidden, don't fret, okay? So it's gonna get glued right about there. So we're gonna add a little bit of adhesive. Hi Wendy, how are you doing? Yes, it does look like brocade, absolutely. <laughs> All right, so it's not the leaves, Heather, it's the leaves, let's be clear. Um, all right, so we're gonna go ahead and add this. I'm gonna go probably right there, works for me. Nope, that's a little high, that's better. Um, I should probably tell you the dimensions of this, this little strip. I think it's an inch, inch and a quarter. So this is five and a quarter by an inch and a quarter, okay? Um, all right, so we're gonna set that aside for a couple minutes and we're gonna work on our focal image. So again, I was having so much fun with these laser cut foil sheets that I decided I needed to use more of them because they work so well with this um, particular stamp set. So I punched out this particular one and I thought, okay, I could layer my sentiment like that. But then when I put that on, it's too big for my card and it covers up most of my stamp leaves. So we're gonna give it a little trim. So all I did is I basically trimmed on a diagonal from where one leaf ends where the next leaf ends. So I end up with a quarter there, or a corner there rather. And same thing on this one. Okay, this piece you could totally keep for die cutting something small. So don't throw it out. Waste not, want not, as they say. Let's get rid of that little bit there. Why is that not coming out? There we go. Okay, so now before we add those, we're gonna stamp our sentiment. So here I have a sentiment that says, your friendship is something I know I can count on. And I think we all have friends that uh, we could say that about, or I hope we all do. Um, having a good friend is one of, I think, life's greatest blessings. So I have here this little stitch label. It's cut using the Tasteful Label size, and it's cut from very vanilla cardstock. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and ink up my sentiment in the Blackberry and stamp that just centered on that little label. Okay, so pretty. You could totally do it in the Merlot. You could do it in Espresso. You could do it in whatever color you like. Okay, all right. So then we're going to add our little trimmed laser cut leaves. So we're going to add a little bit of tape to the back of our label. And then we're gonna add one little set of leaves on the top corner and one on the bottom corner. And then we have something that fits onto the front of our card, okay? Now, I wanted to add a little bit more of that gorgeous Merlot and Blackberry. So we are going to add um, a couple of leaves. Now, I found it easier to actually glue these onto my card front before and then pop this one up. So that's what we're going to do. So we're gonna add a little bit of tape to this guy and it's gonna go just about there. And then we've got one of these little leaves and look at how gorgeous they are with that stitching. Aren't they pretty? Oh, love them. All right, so we're gonna pop that one there and then we'll add this little guy kind of down here and we'll add this little guy kind of down there and then when we pop this on we're gonna have just a little bit more intense color there all right now before we put that on we're gonna add a little bit of this gorgeous new ribbon so this is this copper metallic ribbon it comes in a bundle in the Gilded Autumn Suite I shouldn't have taken my sticky off because I had it marked and then I left it there it is I didn't take my sticky off, it's there. Um, basket weave metallic ribbon combo pack. Okay, so you get five yards of each, this gold and then this gorgeous mint macaron basket weave. Um, so I'm gonna take and just add a glue dot to one end of my copper ribbon here. And we're gonna lay that across the front of our card and just wrap the end and stick it down. Trim this guy off of our roll. And same thing on this end. Just like that, okay? And then we're ready to go ahead and add our um, sentiment. So we're gonna pop this up. So we'll add a couple of dimensionals to the back of our label here. I think we need one more down. Oh, we might need two more. There we go. We don't want it to get squished, right? <laughs> I know you're all sitting there going, I can't believe how many dimensionals this woman uses. 
All right. So we're going to go ahead and pop that on. I just want to make sure that this is straight against that um, edge of my card. Okay. And I want to make sure that my leaves stay on the background panel. Okay. And then we're ready to glue this onto our card base. Our card base is uh, Mary Merlot cardstock. It's five and a half by eight and a half um, scored in the middle at four and a quarter. So we'll fold that in half along our score line. Okay. And then we'll add a little bit of adhesive. And we're going to pop that on just like that. And we should have about an eighth of an inch border all the way around. Okay. And then we're going to add a bow. So here's your bow tying lesson. Okay. So again, we're going to pinch our ribbon between our thumb and index finger on both hands. We're making two little loops. The trick is to keep it flat, right? Don't let it twist or overlap. And then we're going to take our left loop, cross it over the right and bring it around and through. Now this ribbon is quite stiff, um, so your bow is really gonna hold its shape. Um, but you do wanna make sure that when you're pulling your knot, you pull it really, really tight so that it doesn't slip on you. Okay, uh, that looks good. So we're gonna trim that excess off. And then that is going to get adhered. Now I wanna make sure that this is gonna, you know what, that's gonna be too big a bow. We're gonna make our loops just a teensy bit smaller. And we're gonna change the angle a little bit so they go upwards more. There we go. And that way it doesn't cover up our sentiment. So we will press our knot into a glue dot. And that is gonna get adhered right there, just like that. I might need to trim the tails just a bit. There we go. Okay, and then the last touch are these gorgeous iridescent pearls. Now these are part of the Halloween suite in the new catalog. And uh, there's actually two sides. I'm not sure if you can tell, that's a little bit larger than this one. It's actually a huge sheet, but I've used quite a few of these. Um, these are actually, if you are participating in my online bingo in a couple of weeks, you're gonna get a few of these as a sample in your swag bag. Um, so I'm just going to add a couple of these. I love the colors um, in these pearls and they have like sort of a, a purplish, bluish, greenish tinge that just works really well with the color scheme on this card. So again, just because a product belongs to one suite, don't think that you can't use it with the others. Okay. All right, now let me just show you quickly what I did on the inside of this. I want, didn't want it to be a real shock when you open this and saw vanilla. So for a change, I actually used some crumb cake cardstock for my inside panel. It's totally fine to write on crumb cake. It's easy to, to read. It's not going to be too dark. And then I stamped a few more of my leaves that I used on the front along the bottom edge. Okay, all right, so there we go. Let me just pull all of these back in so that you can see them all one more time. There we are. Now this, again, this bundle, you guys, is one that's easy to overlook because it's not part of a suite um, and people go, oh, I've already got leaves. I'm telling you, you need these leaves. Get rid of your other ones, sell them. <laughs> Give them to somebody, to a needy crafter and get these ones, they are gorgeous, okay? All right, everybody. I hope you have a great week. I hope you enjoyed these and uh, make sure that you set a reminder to join me on Friday evening. No simple stamping this week. This is all about my live launch party for the new catalog. So Friday evening at 7.30 p.m. Mountain Time, not Mountain Time, Eastern Time. <laughs> I'm so used to thinking mountain time because that's stamping up time. Um, 7.30 p.m. Eastern time, I will be live with my new catalog launch party. We'll have lots of projects, lots. I'm going to show you like so much product. Um, so you'll get an up close personal look at just about, well, not everything, but a lot from the new catalog. And if all goes as planned on my order arrives in time, I will also have the brand new stamp and cut em or Stampin' Emboss die cutting machine. Um, it has been ordered, it has been expedited, so hopefully it'll be here in time for Friday. So I hope you tune in on Friday evening. I will have some surprises for you. So make sure you join me. And uh, till then, I will see you. I hope you have a great week. Thanks for joining me. Bye for now.